In this morning's Health Watch, severe asthma, the chronic lung disease, can be fatal. It's also responsible for a quarter of all emergency room visits. Imagine that, a quarter. Well, now, though, a new treatment is actually raising hopes. Medical correspondent Dr. Jennifer Ashton is here with the story, and this is relatable for so many people, Absolutely. Jen. Absolutely, and we like the hopeful stories. It's actually called bronchial thermoplasty, and it's the first device-based asthma treatment approved by the FDA. Now, this minimally invasive procedure is already helping asthma sufferers catch their breath. Swimming is a huge part of my life. I don't remember what it what I was like before I was a swimmer. Stephanie Manicus is a fierce competitor in the pool. That drive to succeed has helped her excel despite a lifelong battle with asthma. Sometimes I can get a breath and sometimes I can't and it's not I don't decide when it happens. Stephanie's not alone. Nearly 40 million Americans have been diagnosed with asthma. More than 400,000 are hospitalized each year and more than 3,000 die. Stephanie's asthma took a turn for the worse in 2010. After her lung ruptured during a college swim practice, her doctor told her it would just be too dangerous for her to compete again. I thought my swimming career was over. That was something her mother, Laura, refused to accept. <clears throat> it was so frustrating, but I, knew I had to find a way to help her. That way was a brand new procedure for people with severe asthma called bronchial thermoplasty, approved by the FDA just last year. Prior to a year ago in the FDA approval of bronchial thermoplasty, um, we really had no other choices for someone like Stephanie. Dr. Kyle Hogarth at the University of Chicago helped conduct the clinical trials. We watched as his team performed the procedure on Stephanie. Using a bronchoscope, the doctor applies thermal energy to the airway wall. That makes the muscle around the airway dysfunctional, decreasing the ability of the airways to constrict, and that reduces the frequency of asthma attacks. Your breathing tubes have a layer of muscle around them, and it's that layer of muscle that tightens up. You don't have to know much about medicine, that breathing through this versus this, which is easier. Patients in the clinical trials experienced a 32% reduction in asthma attacks, an 84% reduction in emergency room visits, and a 73% reduction in hospitalizations. When you can't breathe, nothing else matters. And so when you can ever uh, improve someone's lung function, lung capacity, or even just their quality of their life that centers around their breathing, it's very satisfying. After three procedures, Stephanie is now breathing easier. She hopes to rejoin her swim team in the fall and is even setting bigger goals. Eventually, I'd really like to run the Chicago Marathon and maybe even start doing triathlons. Look at her go, man. Isn't that great? This is, and this sounds like such an incredible procedure. It almost makes you think, why doesn't everybody with asthma look into this? Right. Well, like many procedures, Erica, there are some criteria here. At this point, this is really only for people over the age of 18 who have failed or been unresponsive to aggressive medical therapy. So really not for everyone. But in that subgroup, we're talking about about 2 million people in this country. So that's still a, a fair amount of people, and, and that is severe asthma. Okay. Now, the right. other question for those too many people, how much does this cost and how available or how accessible is it? Well, like any new procedure right now, pretty expensive. It's about $18,000, sometimes covered by insurance, sometimes not. It's really on a case-by-case -case basis and right now being done at about 60 centers in the country. You want to ask your pulmonologist, that's a, a lung specialist, if they're doing the procedure or if they know a referral center that they can send you to. So then what happens after you have the procedure? Do asthma sufferers essentially, can they get rid of their inhaler? Do they have to go back for more treatments? Right, that's the big caveat for all asthma sufferers regardless of what their treatment is, never discontinue medication or throw away your medication just because you think your asthma might be improving. This treatment is no different. Even though they might have a tr great improvement in the, the severity of their asthma attacks, they still will need some medication. The idea is it'll probably be much less medication, fewer medications, and again, those ER visits, those acute asthma exacerbations will be markedly reduced. Okay, and, and, and how much how much more, I mean, I guess it depends on the patient, but, but for someone like the girl that we met, could that really help her? When to achieve her goal of running a marathon. I mean, that requires a oh, lung capacity. Absolutely. Again, this is one of those examples of a surgical therapy augmenting medical therapy and the two working together pr to produce a great clinical effect for the patient. Okay, great story. And like you said, we love the stories that offer some yeah, hope. Yeah, we Thanks. sure do.